Good evening. I would like to call the Public Works Committee of the Common Council meeting uh, to order. It is Tuesday, April 4th at 7 o'clock. Um, tonight we have with us Tom Livingston, Darlene Young, and myself, Barbara Smith. We do not have a quorum. Um, and so uh, what we will do tonight is we will move to public input. And unless any the other two members have an objection, uh, we will move to the discussion items first um, so that uh, in case we have one member who just might be able to make it later, um, if she is, then we can uh, vote on the action items. Otherwise, what we will do is go through the action items uh, for, uh, for discussion, but we won't be able to vote with only three members here. So um, that's what we'll do. And um, at this point, let's uh, move on to public input. Do we have anyone who is um, attending who would like to speak? If anybody would like to speak, can you please raise your hand electronically? It does not appear so. Okay. All right. So I will close public input. Um, and then um, let's go ahead and move on to information and discussion items. Um, first being tree operations and programming and the uh, 2022 Tree City USA and Growth Award recertification, as well as the Neighborhood Tree Liaison Program. Um, thank you. Uh, so uh, the good news is that uh, one more year again, we were awarded for this three CD USA and the Growth Award um, recertification. Paul, do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, how was the application and that what how many years we got this? Yes, uh, we were notified uh, on March 10th and on March 3rd that we received our Tree City USA and the Growth Award recertification. Uh, the Tree City USA uh, for 2022 is the 19th consecutive year, and the Growth Award is the 17th consecutive year. Uh, there's a two-year difference between the two because you have to be a Tree City USA for two years before you can apply for the Growth Award. So that was good news, and we look forward to applying again next year, and it looks like we will be in good shape with the programs that we have in place. We should be in really good shape. Great. Any questions about that? No, great news. Yeah, yep. Congratulations again. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't get to my uh, mute in time, but I just wanted to say kudos to the department and Paul and your leadership. It just is good to hear that we're on this trend of of of, of planting more trees. You know, we've heard a lot about it over the past, and I think we're finally at that point where um, we're getting some real traction, continued traction. So, thanks. Um, and then the uh, Neighborhood Tree Liaison Program. So um, and just to follow up on what Ms. Yan just said, uh, we have been planting a lot of trees recently. You know, we really increased a lot of our tree planting program. And one thing that we just want to put it out there is that we, in the past, we used to have some tree liaison uh, neighborhood partners. So what they do is that they, when we do some projects in town where if there are areas that needs more green space and there is some, uh, also some private properties that will be willing to take the trees that we can plant, uh, will be willing to do that. Um, so unfortunately, uh, after COVID, some of this neighborhood, we do not have any more too many volunteers in that area that do the light work for us. Um, so we just want to put it out there that if you guys have someone or know someone that will be willing to volunteer for this program to reach out to us, because we're trying to create a network that we can have people knock on someone's door, explain where we are planting the trees and all that, because then we can increase even more uh, the program. Great. Great. This, um, you know, uh, more trees. Terrific. Uh, any questions? Um, okay, uh, let's move on to the monthly solid waste report for January and February. And then right into the food scrap drop off if we could. Sure, uh, Chris, uh, can you take that one? Yep, hola everyone, good evening. Um, I actually have good news, so our curbside tonnage um, is down 3.8%. That means what's collected at the 
the curbside for municipal solid waste. Um, our MSW tonnage out of the transfer station is down 1.4%. Um, so that's kind of awesome, guys. Um, recycling, by the way, is up 4.8%. Um, and it's down 11.8% of what's actually brought into the transfer station, not collected curbside. So less people are coming to the transfer station and more people are throwing it curbside, which is good. Um, overall, uh, recycling is up 3%. That's good. As much as I hate to say the food composting part of this, Roy, in this still- Come on, Chris. I saw, I saw. You know, like even with the five, cranberry people need to step up. 5,000, yeah. 5, that's it? Yeah, and I, and I did notice that as I, like I was hoping what I would see is it would increase week by week, but it seems like it's holding steady. There's like the group of us who are who are using it. And I think, I, you know, I wonder if we need, so, you know, some more targeted um, education in the Cranberry area, well, you know, maybe doing something like, you know, letting, letting yes. in the area so or something. The Earth Day and Arbor Day, we're gonna promote more what we are doing. Okay. Uh, so on that Saturday, uh, April 22nd, that they have the event at the green. We're going to have yep. a couple of tables there. And one of them, right. we're going to be selling uh, the compost bins. And also, we're going to have a lot of flyers and, and education material to try to promote even more. Um, right. uh, we could also, also, if you guys think it prudent, um, maybe deploy some of the VMS signs. Um, for Earth Week, just promoting the Cranberry Park food composting site. Um, you know, so more people drive by that probably go on that way to work through Wilton every day and don't realize they can bring their food compost right there at Cranberry Park. Yep, yep. That's and, you know, so many people use that park. Um, I just think we need, we just need to create some more awareness. It's still pretty new up there, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming all of the dog lovers that use the yeah. park for that will also be environmentally friendly and maybe do the food compost. Maybe we put a, a sign right there at the beginning of the trail. I think that's a really good idea because I think, you know, I mean, I just know as, you know, someone who uses the, the park for my dogs, what do you do? You go and you park over, you know, you go, you scoot in that side, you park there and you just go right into, you know, the dog area and not necessarily see that the bins are even there. So I think that's a good idea, right? Right, right there as you sure. walk in. I'll I'll speak to Robert and Ken about that. And, um, awesome. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Um, where did I, hold on. Where's my agenda? There did you is. guys want me to go through quickly the tree removal part of my gig? Sure. All right. Um, so we removed a total of fourteen trees in the month of March. Four in the park properties. Uh, three in the school properties and seven in the city right of way. And we pruned 35 trees, um, one in the school pro parks property, six in school property and 29 trees in the right of way. Um, the corresponding work orders are part of the package. Thank you guys for listening. Okay, thanks Chris. Thanks Chris. And the only reason why we cannot report on planting is that we haven't started, but we're gonna start soon. Uh, so next month we're going to have the no the number of trees that are about planted. We are just finishing up the winter season, so I just want to put on the record that's the reason why we just have the cut numbers but not the new ones. But yeah. next month we're going to already start reporting on how many we plant. Yeah, that makes sense. Spring is planting time. Okay, so then let's move on to current and upcoming projects to go over those quickly. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to go over the active construction ones. We have started our construction season already. The good weather has helped us a lot. Um, so I'm going to now ask Drew to go over the Dreamy Hollow and then followed by the pavement management program. Okay. So at uh, Dreamy Hollow, we've been able to make a, a decent amount of progress through the winter. Uh, since it was mild, we, uh, we've, we've, Pretty much gotten all of, out of uh, Friendly Road, and uh, we're well into uh, Daphne now. And uh, we 
they just received shipment of all the uh, the piles that we're going to be putting in on on uh, on saddle uh, to support the uh, the new storm structure and sanitary sewer structure that we have out there. So things are looking good there. And for uh, paving, we had our pre-construction meeting. Uh, we've got another uh, uh, meeting with our consultant uh, on Thursday and uh, just waiting for the contract to be executed and starting to schedule our uh, um, schedule our, our work for the new contract. And uh, our carryover from last year with uh, with Grasso is underway. We started work prepping on uh, Richards Avenue uh, for paving between uh, Route One and West Cedar Street. So we've got a few streets going uh, with a couple different contracts. Um, so we're we're hoping for some good uh, progress this spring. Great, good weather. We need good weather, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thanks, Joe. Um, so uh, then they might go over the concrete curbs and sidewalks? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we have a number of contracts um, that we have um, either in progress or will be active shortly as, as April progresses. Um, we're still working with, with Grasso on last year's contract to just finish up the punch list um, from those items, obviously, despite how good the winter was contractors sometimes do do their winter shutdown um, for that and they're um, back in town um, and beginning you know to schedule that work for us um, i'm excited to explain about the curbs and sidewalks in the Sangha and morton area um, we have begun that at taylor and worked you know from taylor to avenue a um, that's substantially complete, um, and they've begun excavation along Morton, uh, you know, from Avenue A to Avenue B. Um, overall, um, in that neighborhood, we're looking to complete about 6,100 uh, linear feet of, of curb and sidewalk um, in preparation for the, the paving program and um, in Drew's program for that. Um, the other two contracts, um, you know, are, are scheduled to begin this month. We've had our pre-construction meetings for those, and you'll see activity um, at, at various locations in preparation for bidding and, and the Spring Hill area here shortly. Tom. Um, okay. Yeah, when do you think you're gonna get to the repaving of Highland Avenue? Uh, Tom, we're trying to get that uh, after school is done. Uh, oh, we the the summer? Of are there. Uh, we're trying to wait for the schools to be completed. So it is it's, it's one of our priorities. So the first area where this new contract we're gonna go, it is on the West uh, West Rocks area. That will be uh, the first one that they're gonna do. And we believe that the time by the time that they're gonna be finished there, uh, it may be close to June. If not, we're gonna switch them to another small area that we can do in between. And then we we'll go to Highland. So uh, mid June we should be doing that. Um, right. Thank you. Um, on call drainage, we, the contractor is out of town, uh, but he's going to come back just to do some minor work soon. Um, then we're going to just go ahead and also uh, talk about Gap Pasture Beach. We have a lot of good news there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, we took advantage of the winter with our contractor FGB out there. Um, the base course of paving is, is generally complete and they anticipate weather permitting to finish the main lot paving tomorrow. Um, and then they would mobilize over, um, although they've begun activity at Shady Beach for some of the green infrastructure there. So substantially the green infrastructure features are installed. Um, we're just waiting on their landscaper to, to place the plants. Um, the layout of the parking, um, both for residents and non-residents is scheduled um, in a couple weeks. Um, we wait for the asphalt to cure out there. And um, the other part is there's the thermoplastic um, finish of the pedestrian area next to the sidewalk that, that gives that safe refuge um, for that as we relocate the exit to the to the main aisle of the parking lot. Um, can I just ask Dan, is, has the um, parking lot been opened? I know that it was closed for um, a period of time or is it still closed? 
Right. So it's it's open in portions. Um, the only control they have is is areas that are not complete and to protect the what will be paved for the pedestrian boulevard um, until that area is complete. And then longer term, that area um, you know would substantially remain closed to the residents and guests, um, but allow Rexham Park and you know larger trucks or during you know, major events such as the 4th of July for, for that to be used as an exit aisle um, to expedite people mm -hmm. leaving after. Okay. Great. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it finished. I, I you know, it's um, looks, looks like it's going to be great. Really great. Yeah. Anyone have any questions about that? Okay. Just wanted to say, agree with you, Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And the next one that we have is two bridges, actually. Um, so, Paul, can you just address the free spot rating and then um, go to the other ones that we're doing as well? Okay. Uh, Freeze Park, the material uh, for the rails that are being removed and replaced has been ordered and is due to come in. Uh, the contractor has also received the shipment of the rails that were to be removed, refurbished and reinstalled and they've started doing some of that work up on the Belden Avenue end of Freeze Park so that project is moving along uh it we're hoping to have that done by middle of May end of May somewhere in there uh and it depends upon the delivery of the materials the second project that uh, Vanessa was talking about is Bonnie Brook Road uh they've poured uh, section of the footing today and the reinforcement they put that in earlier this week poured the concrete today and they should be going on to the next section and forming that putting in the reinforcing steel and then pouring that we're hoping that all of the wall in the footing on the south side of the road is completed probably by the middle to end of next week for that project so that's the status update for that one and then once they finish that work they'll be moving to the cannon street project the other project that's going on in terms of bridges is uh, I-95 and Strawberry Hill, the Strawberry Hill Avenue bridge. The contractor has the deck port and the parapet done, and they were installing the membrane on the concrete deck yesterday, and they should be repaving that area in the next few weeks. And that project is scheduled to be totally completed by July 3rd. Okay. That's been a long project. That's good. Um, any, any more questions on that? Okay. So those are our uh, active construction projects. We have the list of whoever is still on the uh, pending contract or design. I'm not sure if you guys have any questions on any others. We're happy to answer. Okay. Any questions? Okay. All right. So let's go back to new business. Uh, we still do not have a quorum. So uh, what we'll do is I'll just read the items. We cannot approve the minutes, so we'll just have to move past that. Uh, but I'll read the items and then uh, Vanessa, you and or, you know, member of the staff can uh, quickly explain. Uh, and if anyone has any questions, we can uh, discuss them. Um, so um, item number two, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to enter into any and all agreements and other documents necessary to extend through April 24th, 2024, the master municipal agreement for the construction projects by and between the city of Norwalk and the state of Connecticut, acting through its Department of Transportation, originally executed in April of 2013. So this is uh, extending the agreement between the state and the state. Um, and the city. And so this contract um, is what we call the master agreement between the cities, the municipalities, and Connecticut DOT. Um, we have that in effect for over 10 years now, about 10 years, it's about to expire. Um, this is with this contract in place, all the time that we have a project that is state funded, we, need to, we don't need to get into an, a separate agreement with them. So this facilitates all the reimbursement and also when we need to pay on no participating. Usually we have the agreement in place and then we receive those project uh, P PAL letters that is uh, where they reference how much money will be dedicated to the project based on that. 
So we have been uh, having that for many, many years. It's a, a streamline on how we do business with Connecticut DOT. So we just need the extension of it. Okay, straightforward. Any questions? Okay. Uh, item number three, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to enter into an, a, in a, to a subordination agreement and such other documents incidental thereto with Tower Plaza Associates, LLC, with respect to the city sanitary sewer easement recorded in volume 479, page 509 of the Norwalk land records and in connection with Tower Plaza Associates, LLC, C Ehler application to deep. Um, and do we have Darren? No, but no, I'll, 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 go ahead. I'll, yeah, this I'll, is, you know, go ahead. So this is another of one of those environmental uh, land use restriction uh, that this is a private property uh, and then they have this agreement to do an ELUR on that parcel with Connecticut DEP. The only reason why we have to subordinate to that is that we do have an easement on that parcel and we have a sanitary sewer that goes through it. So anybody that has anything underground on that parcel has to be in subordination of the agreement that they're going to be doing with Connecticut GP. So in the past couple of years, we have a couple of cases similar to this that we uh, ended up presenting so, uh, for agreement. Um, I just want to let you know that usually before we bring to the board, what we do, we check the conditions of our uh, infrastructure in that area. And it happened in the past that sometimes we, if we will not, if we feel that it's not um, in a very good uh, condition, sometimes we ask uh, the person, the applicant to help us on rehabilitating, replace, or sometimes we just need to add another infrastructure for future improvements. Um, this one, we, we CCTV last week, everything is looking good. So we have no issues on uh, support and be subordinated to their agreements. Okay, any questions? Okay. No, we've done this before, right? So. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's just a different part. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next two items are very awesome uh, pilot items um, regarding sustainability. Oh, excuse me, Barbara. You, yeah. Oh, sorry, four. I missed four. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, four is authorize the purchasing agent to issue a sole source purchase order to Able Tool and Equipment for a Chicago pneumatic compressor for an amount not to exceed $27,049. It's part of the fleet budget, very much needed, needs to be replaced. Um, actually, it's good for sustainability because our compressor is kind of at like a quarter life left and Parks doesn't need a compressor with so much power. So our new compressor will replace a compressor, but that compressor will be Parks' department and they'll use it until it's done. So sure. it's, it's reusing city equipment in another department that doesn't quite need it. It's a cool story. Thank you. Yes, very right. good. Like hand me downs, right? <laughs> Still very much needed and appreciated. <laughs> um, okay, so now on to the other um, the uh, these new pilot programs. Uh, number five is authorize the mayor Harry W. Rilling to execute a no cost agreement between the city of Norwalk and Iyer Cycle LLC for collection and recycling of glass bottles and cans via pop up events in the city of Norwalk. So as opposed to taking your cans and bottles and putting them into the machine and getting your coins back, um, these will be pop-up places throughout the city. So Vanessa, why don't you tell us some more details about that? Yes, yeah, so um, thank you. I recycle, um, we're gonna run this as a pilot program. So they have, what they promote is pop-up events. So they're gonna come with a truck and then the community, and we can park, the, the idea is that we're gonna park this truck in different areas of the city every couple of weeks. Um, so then we're gonna, of course, advertise that they're gonna be there a certain date, and then anyone can come with a bag full of, they only get glass bottles and cans, and then they will give to them and they're gonna get paid uh, $10, for the full bag that is about, that fits about uh, uh, 200 bottles. So it's pretty much the same price that as the, you're gonna bring it to a grocery store. 
they are going to be selling on the first time that they come, you can have pretty much your own bag. But when you come to them the first time, uh, they have their bags that, they, of course, will be recycled, but that they will be selling uh, for 50 cents. Um, so the idea is to try this program. Uh, our goal is try to make the city more and more sustainable. Um, also, minimize how many garbage we are hauling out of our transfer station and also make sure that people will be recycling. So we believe that particularly in some neighborhoods, uh, a pop-up event that we can bring the truck there will be very helpful for people that do not have a car, that sometimes they do not know about recycling. And the most important, they cannot make money out of the recycling. So this is an opportunity that they can really recycle and also uh, get the same 50 cents on their bottle as they would be doing in a grocery store. You know, th this is this sounds great. Uh, so there's no cost to the city? No, nothing. And the one thing I'm just thinking about, so if you have to have a full bag, it's not going to get like the, the person with a couple of bottles. It's going to be encouraging people to collect, I guess, and clean up their areas, I would imagine. Probably in some of the neighborhoods, we're probably going to see that, you know, that people knowing that will be there, they're going to be going around and collecting uh, some of the litter that we have. And again, that is the spring season. Our guys have been on operations cleaning up all those kind of dead ends that we know that a lot of people, unfortunately, the, the some illegal dumping. So hopefully that will be also a consequence of this pop up event. Great. How often do you see this um, vehicle or thing happening? Um, between two to three weeks, Ms. Yang. Uh, so uh, we, we just need, as soon as we get the disapproved and all the agreements in place, um, probably one of the first areas that we want to try is in South Nolo. Um, and then we'll see how uh, that goes. And then we're going to probably circulate that truck in different areas. Uh, and then we'll, we'll always go back to that neighborhood every X amount of weeks. Okay, thank you. The bag is big, you know, so it's not that something that we can go like every other day because people need some time to be able to collect that. Right, okay. So will people need to, uh, to get the bag in advance to fill it up? The first time, no. The first time okay. you'll be able to bring your own bag um, okay. And uh, we're going to, as soon as we get this approved, we're going to start pushing uh, some information and do some public outreach in that area so people will be aware. Um, and then probably we can even try, uh, even combine through the schools. Mm -hmm. And maybe a school in that area, we can send some information through the kids so then the parents will see that the event will be happening in their neighborhood on that week. Great. I, I think this sounds really great. And I'd just like to see how you, um, you know, what the advertisement would look like. I think there's an opportunity here to really engage the, the, the community and doing that in um, dual language, right? I mean, it'll be in different languages. Correct. It will be. And if, and again, and that's why we need to first uh, do some tries. And then that's why this is a pilot program. And then we're going to see how we can turn to make it better. Great. You know, one thing I, I just, I, I, want, I do want to point out, both of the high schools have cannon bottle drives. They're big, um, you know, fundraisers for them. Um, and so I just, just be aware of that. Yeah, you know, I, I was thinking uh, the same thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, be aware of that because we wouldn't want to do anything that, um, you know, really draws away from that, maybe, you know, focus on different, you know, and it's usually, obviously, like, it's the parents and the schools who want to support and they, but it's people who've been doing it for years and years, and they really are big money makers. Um, so, so, you know, um, that, areas our, away from the high schools. <laughs> yeah, our idea is not to compete with that, it's just right. maybe try to uh, get the message about recycling and get the recycling option to some neighborhoods that they do not have access to or, and that they do not know. And we believe that the fact that they're going to make money out of it will also be an incentive for them to talk to the neighbor 
and then start another one. So that's why we think that this program can be very successful. Yeah, one thing I, I would suggest that you not do it the, on the same days that these high schools are having to drive. Right. I mean, those are weekends, mm -hmm. but They're just, weekend. They're just don't do it the same days. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll take that suggestion. Okay. Any more questions on that? Okay. So let's move on to item six, also a sustainability item. Um, Authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute a no-cost agreement between the city of Norwalk and Discover Books for placing a collection bin for used books at the transfer station. Um, so um, this, too, is um, a terrific idea. So you want to tell us a little more detail about that, Vanessa? Sure. Uh, so on this one, um, there is this other company called Discover Books. And what they're going to do is they're going to place a bin very similar to those uh, donated cloth clothing bin that we see in different areas, so about that size. Uh, we're going to place it at the transfer station now. And if you have any books that you want to get rid of, you can go there and put in the bin. They're going to accept hard covers, soft covers, CDs, DVDs. And then uh, when that bin is full, they're gonna come pick it up. It's all on them. And then they bring to their warehouse that is New Hampshire. And then some of them get donated to some public libraries throughout the country or to some uh, schools. And some of them uh, also are sold. Um, so again, there is no cost for the city. This will be a pilot program. We just wanna see how that goes. And again, the weight, the idea is to take out some of the weight that we're hauling out of the transfer station. That's great. Yeah, I, I really, you know, uh, we've been without our garbage star for quite a while, and I know that there's some movement there, and hopefully soon we'll have an announcement. But um, but you're doing some really great work in the meantime. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's not me. It is the team. There, there, there is uh, two or three people uh, that are involved on, on getting this done. Uh, Chris yeah, and I mean, are two of them. So they they deserve to be recognized. Excellent. Great job. Okay, so um, items 7A and B, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to enter into any and all agreements and other documents necessary to accept a sanitary sewer easement deed over 15 Oakwood Avenue, Norwalk, Connecticut, confirming easement rights set forth in certain easement map depicting sanitary sewer easement over Stone Commercial Real Estate Condominium, Norwalk, Connecticut, prepared for the city of Norwalk, dated January 16th, 2023, at a scale of one inch equals 30 feet, prepared by Redness and Mead. And 7B, 8-24, referral of sanitary sewer easement at 15 Oak Avenue in favor of City of Norwalk for report and recommendation action. Um, this uh, We already had approved the sewer extension some time ago, and um, this is to uh, access manholes, if I understand it correctly. That's correct. So we just have a one, one man who is on their property and we need to record that easement. So now it is all a public sewer, but part of the man who is on their property, we need a easement so we can grant access to it. This was the only part that was missing. It's just that the map wasn't ready. That's why we couldn't put it all together when you guys approved the, the private sewer and the road expansion. Right. Me. Okay. Any questions about that? Straightforward. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, number eight authorized purchasing agent to increase the purchase order to Frontier Communications Parent Inc. in the amount of $100,000 for the East Avenue Advanced Utility Project number 0301. 0515 NP partial funding from Connecticut Department of Transportation. Uh, this is regarding the undergrounding of utilities on East Avenue. Um, so what happened is that in the past, you guys remember that we did a, a couple of agreements for, with every single utility company that we are paying them to underground the work between Four Point and Homestead. Um, so Frontier, and always based on an estimate, so now Frontier is about to really start the work when they revise the estimate 
uh, they they realize that there is another hundred thousand dollars that they're going to need. Uh, what happened is that is their policy that if the PO do not reflect the estimate, they will not going to start the work. So that's why we're already in front of you guys asking for that adjustment. The good part of it is that the city is not don't need to cover the whole hundred thousand dollars. Forty percent of this, around forty thousand, it will be paid by Connecticut DOT. But instead of doing a separate contract with Frontier and Connecticut DOT, that may take a little bit longer for them to start. Because we have the master agreement, DOT can use us to be the contract holder and then reimburse us through a pub. So that's why we're increasing this PO in $100,000. Any questions? Okay. Um, and then finally, uh, number nine, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute an agreement between the city of Norwalk and Tie and Bond, Inc. for professional engineering services required for the design of the undergrounding of the Elizabeth Street Overhead Utilities, Project RD 2023-2, for a sum not to exceed $200,000. Um, this, too, is undergrounding of utilities. Yes, so in the past we did Day Street, that was a major project and we ended up undergrounding all the utilities. Um, now we see a very good opportunity to underground Elizabeth Street. Uh, but before we move forward with that project uh, on the construction side, we want to design again, it has the same challenges on getting all the utilities underground to keep the surface. So for us to be able to have uh, a full streetscape for that part of the city, we need to have that underground design. So this will cover the design costs for the undergrounding of the two, which is there. So is, is this related to the Eversource high tension wire project? Uh, they, they route, yes, go through that street, uh, Tom. So that's why we, we believe that this is a good opportunity since we're gonna have the transmission lines on that street. Also, we can underground the rest of the- right. I thought they gave us a credit or, or money towards that. There, there is, as, as part of this side ladder, uh, there is money that will be applied to the project. Right, and so that's gonna be for the actual project. I mean, is it, or just this design it, it as well, or? Uh, this, this funding that we are using now, it is capital funding. So we can use that for, to cover for the design. And as soon as they are pretty much starting their construction, we'll be able to have ours ready and also put it out to bid and, and use that money that we're going to receive. Gotcha. Thanks. So just working in advance. Great. Okay. Any, um, any more questions? Okay. Um, so uh, we just can just note that Ms. Najelski Eichner just joined us at 7.38. Uh, Nora, just to give you an update, uh, since we did not have a quorum, we just went through each item um, and they were explained. So we couldn't vote on anything. So we're, we're finished now. <laughs> so- um, Oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. No, I, we understand. We understand the, the situation. So um, anyway, what I'm going to recommend to, to you um, and then to the other members of the committee, which I will reach out to, is to watch particularly this portion uh, where we went through the uh, items. And then I will move them. Um, I will plan to move them directly to the Common Council uh, meeting of next week of Tuesday. Um, that sounds that sounds like a good solution, Barbara. I will definitely watch, and I apologize to all of the committee members and also to the members of the staff. I'm really very sorry. I have a war conflict, um, but I um, will certainly get myself up to speed and be prepared to vote on the meeting. And thank you very much for your time. Oh yeah, oh, and th and thanks. I, I appreciate you coming on. <laughs> I know you tried, um, but we you know we had some other members with with uh, some pretty substantial conflicts tonight, and so we'll just just do the best we can. Yeah. Um, All right. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Appreciate right. it. Thanks, Nora. Okay. So, um, anything else? Any final questions? Okay. So well, I had a question, which is not really appropriate for this meeting, but I'll ask anyway. So when they're tearing down the, the old IMAX theater, how are they gonna make sure it doesn't fall into the water? <laughs> well, they are, we, there is a specialized construction company doing the demolition of the, they, they study that very well on how they're gonna demolish. 
most of the building on the inside got demolished even in advance. Um, yeah, I saw, so I saw, I've been watching it, but it just seems yeah. like the, one whole side is going to right on the water. So, no, the, the only thing is that they're going to just bring the building up to the footing. They cannot, they're not going to excavate beyond that. Yeah. Because that they will have to wait to do it later. I'll just have to keep watching. Yes. <laughs> You know, I haven't been down. I haven't driven by to see. Yeah. The whole it's oh, fascinating to watch. It is. Yeah. It is amazing that you have like a whole facade, one total side of the, the building gone, and you can see the steps, the concrete steps of the IMAX. Yeah. Yeah. I used to be. If you're on the bridge, you'll have a very good view. Yeah. yeah. I'll drive down there tomorrow. Do it. It's interesting. Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anything right. else? No. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Motion to adjourn. Good night. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.